Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Arguable. You are Good evening. I am Connor Roberts, CEO of We Are Tentorus. Our true inspiration for tonight comes from July 20th, 1969, a historical day for mankind, having landed the first human on the moon. We achieved greatness ahead of our time. Here at Centaurus, we are bringing visions of this, the modern age. Our proposal represents the pinnacle of space design innovation. We are truly building tomorrow today. The serial de delta, the moon, the oasis of the pearl of the desert, is the true form of the moon, as we are turning the desert of the moon into an oasis. Archibald is truly the settlement for the ages. Join us in our vision building tomorrow today. I'd now like to introduce Drew, Head of Business. At Centaurus, we strive to deliver an economical product that is innovative and delivers to the customer, the Foundation Society. Aglibol's modular design through the casks allows for easy adaptations, which enables room for expansion modifications in the event that the Foundation Society's scope alters um, and their goals change. These are potential adaptations to the, to the design of Aglibol. Uh, casks can be actually deployed to various locations around the moon to set up mobile workstations to explore the surface and research the composition of different regions. By exploring the lunar surface, unique materials can be found, which can be utilized as building materials for future settlements. The far side of the moon is of particular interest, interest, as the constant impact that meteorites make with the surface triggers a chemical reaction, which forms unique substances. A transport vehicle will be able to take up to eight casks to these locations, uh, and they will be the mobile workstations. Pursuing these unique materials will place the Foundation Society in a prime place in manufacturing and refining history. When Aglibol reaches the end of its 50-year operational lifespan, as indicated in the tender, it does have the potential to be turned into a tourist location, as the site is historical, being the first lunar settlement. The cost um, of Aglibol, as shown here, the capital expenditure through construction, is uh, significantly low, as the costs are considered to be part of the launch costs, which is excluded from the costs and billing as specified in the tender. Since casks will be made up mostly of, um, the base structure will be made up mostly of casks, there is a very low amount of construction materials cost as well. Various fit-outs will be available for casks as indicated in the table, um, with the cost varying based on the application. These fit-outs include furniture and any additional modifications to the structure in order to withstand certain environments, such as the lunar surface. This next table exhibits the operational expenditure of Aglibol per annum, and the largest cost involved is in, in relation to the wages, which are based on an average amount of 250000 per annum. The tasks in the construction schedule are on a critical path, meaning that the total float is as close to zero as possible. The triangles in the bar represent milestones in the schedule. The first milestone is the execution date, as shown on the far left. At the top of the chart area, the occupancy levels are shown. These are based on the phases of construction. So there's three phases. Phase one is the research and development and site survey. Phase two is the skeleton structure, power facilities, and plugging the lava tube. And phase three is the construction of the main base. The skeleton base is a crucial element during construction, as it allows for the base to be occupied only four years after the execution date, maximizing economic benefits. The base being a modular structure also allows easy expansion when occupants arrive. These two tables are a general color-coded uh, tables for um, the top one being threats, the bottom one being opportunities. This table shows the threats present in Aglibel, uh, and these are minimized um, based on uh, the automated systems and structural engineering. And finally, uh, this shows the opportunities that can be made out of risks. I'll now hand over to Jakob from Structures. Good evening. Our habitat, Aglibol, will, uh, will be built 
entirely using cask structures. We will construct casks with additional interlocking mechanisms so we can slot them together to form any sort of uh, rectangular sort of shape or any layout that we need. This will be a modular design that can incorporate any undulation or movement, anything that we possibly need. The habitat will also be supported through tethers and struts, uh, shock absorbing struts underneath the bottom layer of casks. Our habitat will mostly be protected by the lava tube, but we will also seal the entrance to the lava tube with a wall of casks that we will permanently decommission. These can be left empty for rooms for observation. Um, two to four casks uh, is enough for 50 people uh, space-wise as required in the tender for observation and natural views of the port, which is further outside the lava tube. Most of the casks ca uh, contained within that ceiling of the wall will be filled with regolith to provide protection from any stray radiation or the elements, the space weather, that sort of thing uh, that will come in from outside. Access points will be staged with also casks turned vertically upwards that can be led to the surface where we can build further access points and things on the surface. Uh, overall, our suggested overall dimensions are for uh, estimated for 350 people living within that size. Our interior layouts are sectioned as they are modulized and interchangeable. We can adjust residential, any of these spaces to whatever we need as time goes on. Uh, Aglabol will have an approx, our suggested design will have an approximate volume of around 423,281 cubic meters, excluding the walls that are contained with inside that volume of the casks. All, and yes, once again, I would like to stress that all areas are interchangeable, so most of our uh, interior layouts can be changed as wished and as required by processes or events that happen in the settlement. Uh, this is a cross-section of the interior. Residential will most likely be housed uh, within the top part, away from more industrial and storage areas. Our construction sequence follows the phases as explained by Drew. First, we will build necessary facilities such as the port, power, uh, before we move people in and then start work. Uh, we'll also start work autonomously on a gantry uh, crane system and the actual sealing of the lava tube. This will continue and we will slowly move casks in to further build up our habitat aglobol. This is a uh, conceptualized image of a possible research space within aglobol. And yes, once again, these are interchangeable spaces that we can fit to whatever size or that we are required. I would now like to pass on to Shane for operations. Centaurus has designed Aglabol with seamless operation in mind, rooting from highly efficient systems operation. Cast containers are a core component. Sorry. Cast containers are a core component of our structural plan, providing significant cost savings to our proposal due to the multi-use nature of the containers. These are constructed from aluminium manganese alloy that can be sourced on Earth as well as lunar regolith in the case of wanting to create more modules after the station has been commissioned. Um, they, and then construction will be aided by machinery including the Lynx container transportation system pictured as well as other cast loading vehicles as specified in automation. Aquabol's food supply is sources sourced from a combined aquaponic and aeroponic system with fish residing in the water storage containers for the aeroponic mist. This provides an additional source of nutrients for plant development and supplements in vitro meat. In, metro meat, in vitro meat. Centaurus also values safety keeping a six month supply of solent, soylent, a dissolvable yogurt food substitute in case of crop failures. Now, power is generated by two solar satellites with laser technology transferring it to the surface. 4.26 megawatt hours are required per day, 
and will be distributed around the settlement using carbon nanotube cabling. And two tiers of electrical storage are present, including an innovative pumped heat electricity storage system detailed up on the slide, as well as a small bank of lithium ion batteries to cater for fast discharge in the case of a peak. Ultra-fast, high bandwidth Li-Fi technology will provide settlements with wireless communication needs. The shorter wavelength compared to radio waves achieved this in line of sight is not required to the router for connection. Long range communication is through low power wide area modulation technology routed by the solar satellites which will be in a geosynchronous orbit. And transportation within the lava tube as well as in the environment will be achieved by the Lynx once again pictured. The Lynx has capacity for one cast container for transport and in the case of lunar expeditions, a cast with a habitation model will be loaded onto the Lynx. Spacecraft will land in a dedicated docking platform outside of the tube plug and payloads will then be transferred through the plug into the lava tube using the links at the earliest opportunity and this is further detailed in 3.4. Um, Ag Aglabol's atmosphere is economical yet comfortable with 35% humidity and 90 kPa equivalent 100 metres altitude and purification occurs for, assist for a wide range of technologies including a Sabatier reactor and a system of piped ammonia coolant um, and external and in internal heat sinks will ensure thermoregulation. Um, now, waste management will be achieved for a comprehensive cycle as seen up on the screen, and we have an emphasis on durable, reusable packaging and minimising waste at all times. And a similarly effective process has been adopted for water management, um, with water stored in 10,000 litre polyethylene tanks located in separate areas to ensure contingency. Now, an extensive trace study has been conducted between ground-based solar and solar satellites with two transmission systems, microwave and laser. The main disadvantages of microwave satellites are safety concerns in the form of radiation, high startup costs and more complicated and harder to produce and also maintain technology, while ground-based solar has lower power output and issues with lunar dust abrasion, as well as a lower ability to angle the vector panels and a shorter day times. A laser transmission, on the other hand, alleviates the issues of microwave satellites while providing the benefits of satellite technology. Therefore, two laser solar satellites will provide power for the settlement along with two receivers for redundancy. These satellites will be maintained in a geosynchronous orbit and a small bank of ground mounted panels will provide backup power for the control centre and bunkers in, as a risk management thing in the case of disaster mitigation. Now, Aglabol has extensive and efficient port facilities to provide for significant levels of shipping to the settlement, and a main landing pad with a 100 metre radius will be located 500 metres away from the plug of the settlement, and such distances for risk mitigation at landing and to minimise the effect of lunar dust. Fuels of liquid hydrogen and oxygen are stored in stainless steel pressure vessels. Please ignore the polymer on the slide. Located within a cask to provide an extra layer of protection, and such a cask is encased in regolith to provide dust shielding. And ship movements will not occur in the transition time between day and night to ensure the effectiveness of electromagnetic dust mitigation. And a layout of the port can be seen above. And I'd now like to hand over to Riley to present human factors. There are two floors to, that are allocated to the community design. Colour coded to represent amenity blocks, commercial spaces, recreational and medical spaces, living quarters, dining spaces, elevators and walkways. The settlement offers amenities like modern cruise liners with buffets, restaurants and relaxation zones. The design allows for the settlement to take in lunar travellers. The living quarters have a specialised design as the ability to be customised is crucial for individuality and luxury needs. Centaurus makes this possible by allowing passengers to request the design of their living quarter. The living quarters also have multi-use furniture that allows for compact design while still providing all necessary furniture for comfortable and efficient working. With the use of the casks as our main building blocks, it is large enough to split them in half and have two people living in each cask. The major consumables such as food, furniture and supplies have been calculated for yearly necess necess necessities. The distribution of food, supplies and furniture will be managed by robots with the purpose of moving required materials and resources from the allocated storage areas to required locations. An example of this includes a distributive robot transporting food to a restaurant or convenience store. 
Potential environmental issues such as radiation, extreme temperatures and vacuum have been noted and appropriate measures have been devised in order to prevent many from happening. Processes have been cre created if injuries or illnesses have occurred to personnel that aim to reduce the negative effects and allow recovery to take place. Physical and psychological factors have also been accounted for, with many systems in place to prevent or reduce the effects of issues such as physical decon deconditioning and deterioration of performance due to stress, boredom or illness. There will be many protection and security systems in place to order to make Centaurus a livable environment, such as electrical dynamic, electrodynamic dust shields on spacesuits and red lights on entrances which will direct passengers back to base. Magnetised cask for airlock and walls on Aglabol which will reduce the amount of dust from travelling into the settlement. A procedure has also been put in place for when passengers enter back into the base represented in the flowchart shown. The space suits will have many features on them to make them as safe as and as practical as possible. The space suits will include a self-repairing resin layer, reflective exterior layer, insulation, heat and cooling systems, emergency kits, day and night electrodynamic dust shields, flashlights, cameras and display interface. I'd now like to hand over to Hamish, who will be presenting automation. Good evening. The Lynxes are the primary transport system for the casks. They will transport the containers from the landing pod to Aglabol. The Lynx are, are designed to carry a maximum of eight casks and will be modified to provide life support in case of a critical failure. Oh, sorry. Additionally, a gantry system will be constructed above the settlement to lift and position the cast in a Tetris-like fashion. Finally, the rovers will have a forklift attachment that will move and position the cast inside the settlement. Initially, the main entrance will be constructed via the rovers with various attachments to assist in construction. Afterwards, the essential systems will be constructed via the crane and oriented, orientated correctly. Finally, the landing pod will be, will be constructed 500 metres from the lava tube and the links will begin transporting the resources and the casks. The cleaning bots, now in terms of cleaning. The bots will contain magnets to ensure that they stay on the ground and will be able to perform their required tasks. Individuals will be issued either a watch or a pair of glasses uh, as their personal device. Each device will be equipped with the online atlas, aka OLA. Distributive, sorry, distributive bots move various materials to and from allocated storage areas uh, wet to wherever they are required. Community workspaces will include tablets, which include either a touchscreen or mechanical keyboard. Firewalls will be in use to prevent unauthorized access and to ensure safety of personnel and, function and functionality of the system. Private tablets will also be provided to store all personal information. To access these private tablets, individuals are required to use their personal device to gain access. The Alpha Main control system will contain all network. The Alpha Main control system will contain all network systems and data storage. As the central system, the Alpha Main will transmit to beta centers via Li-Fi to the aforementioned devices, be it the personal or the uh, provided. The general system is accessible by all employers and workers and include all information to assist them in task completion. In the Okay, we have included various control systems for engineers, including exploration, automation, mining, landing pads, and power generation, all of which can be maintained and managed to provide optimum functionality and efficiency. And then there's a reference list. All right. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we present Aglabon. Thank you.